There he is, the boss dog. You know why he's the boss dog? Because he plays daddy like a fiddle. Plays me like a fiddle, goes out and pees for two seconds and he knows he's gonna get a treat. And then 10 minutes later, he's like, daddy, daddy, take me outside. Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. September 8th, 2024, let's get into it. First story I wanted to hit on today was uh, something you probably hadn't heard about. Rebecca, and I'm not sure, Shep Tigui, Shep Tigui was set on fire in Kenya uh, by her boyfriend. Nobody, uh, you won't hear that on the mainstream news, I can guarantee it. Uh, it was a terrible thing, but women all around the United States don't care. You know, they're more worried about getting access to abortion than the fact that men are competing in women's sports. Blows my mind, man. Blows my mind. You'd think that women would be up in arms about that, saying to the totalitarian, warmongering Democrats, look, man, we want our rights respected. We only want to compete against women. I mean, man, I keep catching videos where some guy just pumbles a woman in, in women competition, or he's, he's, you know, racing against them in a swimming pool. And women don't care, man. Men are taking over women's sports, and women do not care. They'll support the Democrats to the bitter end. I don't understand it. Somebody please explain it to me. The next story I wanted to get into. Oh, by the way, background on her. She was 33 years old. She was set on fire in Kenya, and she was a great running athlete. Now, the, the race that I saw her in, she was, she was 44th, but I mean, you got to remember... She's up against the best competition in the world. She was making a life for herself. And some idiot guy, an abusive guy, that's another thing. I don't understand why women date abusive men. You know, there's a lot of good men out there if they just search around. So anyway, the uh, next one is Brandon Strax, Strax S-T-R-A-T-A. And uh, he's got a website called Walk Away Challenge or walkawaychallenge.com. And uh, what they're doing is for the best story of people that walked away from the Democrat Party, you could win up to $10,000. There's also other prizes. And uh, I was thinking about putting up a video. I mean, you have to understand. I mean, because his story was just like mine. I used to have a lot of Democrat friends. Uh, that was back just before COVID hit. And, uh, you know, it was amazing. Because, you know, number one, I was already having difficulty with them. I was, but I was pretty quiet about it. I was a Trump supporter. None of them liked that at all. But they were willing to kind of put up with it because I would go out with them and I just wouldn't talk about it. And, you know, and some of those Democrats would abuse. You know, if they saw somebody with a MAGA hat, friend of mine, well, he was a friend of mine anyway. <laughs> he runs over and tells the guy, Trump lost, Trump lost. Get over it, man. Just because the guy had, I mean, th these are what Democrats do. They're, they accost you uh, because they just, uh, I don't know, they're authoritarian lunatics, man. Well, anyway, I lost every single Democrat that I knew, and I didn't know. I, everybody that I was hanging out with, because my wife was a huge liberal Democrat, was a Democrat. And so I became totally alienated, uh, basically all alone. All alone, no friends. Nobody to hang out with. I was shunned. You know, nobody would call me to play golf. Nobody wanted to be around me. And also because I wouldn't get the jab. You know, that was another reason that they couldn't stand me. And I kept telling them. Uh, and then, of course, January 6th, when I would tell them about that, I said, that was a setup, man. It's obvious. You know, when, when they were going on and on about it, it was the worst event since 9-11. It was, it was the worst event since the Civil War. And uh, by the way, there was a guy, you got to watch the... The interview, Viva Fry just did an interview with a 24-year-old reporter that worked for TNET. And uh, it was a real interesting interview. It's like two videos back. And uh, the guy, he was there on 9-11. He was actually right across from, from Angela Babbitt when that cop shot her. And uh, he said it was horrific. And that she was actually trying to defend the police, uh, you know, um, Ms. Babbitt. And, uh, and, then, and then the guy just brutally murdered her. And then what do the Democrats do? They put him up for, for, uh, for an award for killing somebody in cold blood. 
I mean, he, he, and he describes it. I mean, that just encourage you to watch the video. But anyway, it was a lot more information on the whole T-Net hoax. And uh, he was talking about, he said, well, he says, I can only tell you from my perspective. And I'm putting, you know, I'm just summarizing what the video, you got to watch the whole video. Man, it's like an hour long. I tell you, Viva does some long damn videos. It was an interview. And uh, he said, look, he says, I don't know about this whole RT influence thing. He says, I was free. He says, I was the, pretty much the only employee. You know, they had independent uh, creators like Tim Poole and Benny Johnson and, uh, uh, well, uh, Dave Rubin. And there was one other, I can't remember her name. Because those are the only three that I've ever watched, uh, which is ironic. Because you know Tim Pool, they're taking him out, man. They're going after him big time. He's a lefty. The left eat their own, man. <laughs> I mean, if there was any create any content person that I watch, don't watch very often. I don't mind Tim Pool. I think he's okay, but he's a lefty. He hates Trump, man. You know, <laughs> so they're eating their own. They're going to take out one of their own just because I think he might be against war. I mean, I guess that's the, that's what the because the war wrong in Democrats. Maybe that's why they hate him so much because he's actually against war. And then, of course, uh, Ruben, he was a huge DeSantis uh, 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 supporter. You know, he, he, he said he'd, he'd vote for Trump, but, you know, he doesn't. He doesn't really like Trump all that much. It's just that's the only option that he had. Anyway, you got to watch the whole interview because it's just so fr freaking uh, lunatic. I mean, what do you think about it? The BBC can pay uh, independent creators. Uh, the Israelis can pay independent creators. Uh, you know, who else? I mean, all kinds of foreign companies and foreign governments pay creators to make uh, content. And most of the time, it's, it comes with stipulations. Well, uh, TNET didn't have any stipulations. None. The, the uh, philanthropists that were funding it said, no, go out and just create whatever you want. There was no requirement there whatsoever. And we have yet to know. The guy kept pointing out, he says, we don't even know if this is all true or not. It was just an allegation. But the woman that owned the company, I mean, they utterly destroyed her. It was horrible what they did to her. I mean, that, that YouTube took down her channel. I mean, she's been building that channel for years. That's why you can't that's why I don't even monetize my videos on YouTube. You know, I don't want to be beholden to them in any way, shape, or fashion because then, then they got a string on me. And, I, and, and you know, all they got to do is threaten me because, you know, I talk about topics that YouTube doesn't like me to talk about. And, I, and, and so I don't want them to say, you know what, you know, you are making a living with YouTube or you're making X amount of money. You're gone, baby. God, and then and then just you know wipe me out completely so that's why you know I just do these for fun uh, and of course on rumble I am hoping to make some money someday on rumble but I'm not sure if if the Democrats win in November I think rumble will be gone they'll uh, they'll wipe them out and they'll wipe out uh, Elon Musk and X X will be gone because of the censorship so but let's keep by the way, I'm getting a little more organized. <laughs> I, actually, I actually made a list before I came out of things to talk about. Uh, you know, most of the time I just kind of go random through the, through the video, making about a gazillion clips, you know, moving right along. But anyway, the, uh, oh, the Democrats, they uh, blocked the voter, um, the SAVE Act. Okay, they call it the SAVE Act. I call it the voter ID bill. Now, why do you think Democrats wouldn't want voter ID? Because they want to cheat, man. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> you know, ask a Democrat, why would you block voter ID? I don't know. They're a vacuous freaking meat puppet, you know, that just goes along with whatever the Democrat Party says. Somehow voter ID, I guess, they, oh, well, it uh, keeps the blacks from being able to vote. What black do you know that doesn't have an ID? <laughs> I mean, come on, man. It, it's so ridiculous. Oh, my God. And even illegal aliens who have IDs now. The Democrats have given all them IDs. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's just so freaking stupid. The, uh, the other one was I wanted to talk, you know, because they were talking about the new Russia, Russia, Russia hoax, you know, and they're, they're saying that these uh, voting machines are vulnerable to Russian attack or Chinese, and I think they named Iran. Well, I guess the voter ID machines, you know, they said they're not connected to the Internet. That's what the Democrats told us. So if they're not connected to the Internet, how are they vulnerable to attack? 
What, are they going to send in a Russian agent to every polling station around the United States and have them stick a USB drive in there and program it manually? I mean, or they've got agents in every freaking polling place in the United States? Or the machines really are connected to the Internet, and it's the Democrats, the confession through regression, it's the Democrats that are going to be hacking into those machines, and they're going to be changing the vote count. I want to go and... Um, I think I want to vote for Jason Shaw. They didn't vote that ballot while ago. There wasn't nothing there. Let me, yeah, I think we need to vote for him. And I'm going to complete it. Confirm, ballot, save, move to next ballot. Okay. So it pulls up the next ballot that needs to be adjudicated. So you made a vote for someone where someone did not vote. I did, didn't I? And you're the election supervisor? I'm the election supervisor. I am the person that sits and does the adjudication. Yes, sir. Go back to the Trump and Biden race and decide since both are marked, you just count one of them and not count the other. Can you Let's see. That? Yep, sure can. Mm -hmm. I think I want to vote for Biden. Let's let Biden win this one. So what you put supersedes whatever. Uh huh. So you. But I decided this. This Al. He don't deserve no votes. Let's not let nobody vote for that. And complete. Okay. Well, here's another one. I don't think any votes need to vote on this ballot. I don't. I think this really needs to be just a blank ballot. Complete. Mr. Can you scan a ballot more than once? If I've just want, done it. Just I'm talking about you just. Yeah. You just keep scanning them. Yeah. If you want. I just kept scanning that same. Like, you just keep them. Mm -hmm. I just scanned the same batches that y'all just voted. Mm -hmm. I never got any more until about one. That's why we shouldn't have voting machines. The um, the other thing on voting uh, was you know what's amazing to me is now they're already talking about how the twenty. 24 election is going to be uh, influenced by Russia, 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 and China, and uh, all these foreign nations, and that, uh, that, you know, there's cheating already in the works from all these foreign governments. What, if you look back, <laughs> 2020 was the safest election on the planet. There was nothing that happened in the 2020 election. Oh, no, no, nobody cheated in the 2020 election, but yet, you know, I think they're preparing just in case that they can't cheat enough to win that they're going to, you know, they're going to come out and say, well, you know, the only reason Trump won was because of the Russians. The Russians were there. And I did my video in the last video where I showed you that Trump, he, he abused the Russians, man. He put sanctions on them. I mean, he brought, he expanded NATO. I mean, everything that Russia was trying, that's why they want Kamala Harris. A lot of people think he's trolling with that uh, comment where he said, I, you know, I would prefer Kamala Harris because she's predictable. Yeah, he was trolling, okay, but he was also being honest. Trump did a lot worse to the Russians than Kamala Harris has ever done in the, in the four years that she's been in office. I don't even say Biden. Biden's just a meat puppet. I, I think Kamala probably knows more about what's going on, <laughs> even though she didn't do anything, you know. I mean, they kept her out of everything. But I did hear that, you know, she's in occasional meetings where she gets briefed. All right, so let's uh, keep going. I uh, redacted. Now there's a channel that I watch all the time. And man, I tell you, sometimes they just have some great stuff. Now I got a buddy of mine, he's into that, uh, I can't remember what it's called, uh, skin fish farm or something like that. I I don't know, I haven't watched too many of them, but it's this, it's this ranch somewhere where there's all sorts of weird UFO activity and they make video after video about, you know, how they're, and they got all of this, I guess they got a lot of money backing them. They got all this equipment where they're, you know, trying to figure out what the, you know, multi-dimensions and, you know, uh, alien uh, spaceships and all kinds of stuff. Uh, anyway, I can't, uh, I wish I could remember the, na <laughs> the name of the series. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to encourage him to watch this redacted episode because it was, uh, it was about the uh, 2020, uh, well, you remember the, uh, the, the Malaysian flight MH370 that uh, that disappeared and man I mean that was one weird video I mean uh, the guy talked about it I mean 
the, the, the plane literally just disappeared. It was crazy. I mean, they, and they've got some new video that came out. Uh, I don't know. I think that, you know, there's always the uh, whistleblowers that put this stuff out there. It just You just got to find it. And uh, anyway, they put these videos out. And you see the plane one second. And it's like, you know, going into warp speed. Remember when the, in Star Trek, when they go into warp speed and the plane just poof. And it disappeared. And you're like, son of a gun. And, uh, and so the guy was talking about it. And he was saying that, you know. He believes that, um, you know, this is the uh, alien technology that we've uh, reverse engineered over the past few decades. And that the, uh, the United States stole the plane uh, because there was 20, uh, I want to say 20 Chinese nationals on there. Or maybe it was some other country. And they were on their way to Beijing. And uh, he was saying they had some super uh, quantum computer technology with them and they were going to defect. And somehow the U.S. government found out about it, and so that's why they uh, they captured that plane and landed on these islands, and uh, and so so that they could get those 20 people, so that they couldn't reveal that technology to the Chinese. Now that's the whole. I mean, I'm summarizing that, but I'm just telling you to go watch that video. The uh, the next thing on Redacted was they did a uh, video, Rumble only video, which is what I'm going to do. I just want to promote a future video. As uh, they talked about the uh, the corruption at the CDC, and you're not allowed to talk about these things on YouTube. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, a double video. Uh, Dr. John Campbell, uh, I got it right here. He presented new peer-to-peer -peer reviewed papers which confirm the presence of mRNA nanostructures from the jab. So all these people getting vaccinated with the jab. I'm telling you, man, there's some lot of evil stuff surrounding that. And so he's, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine the, uh, and this will only be unredacted. This is going to be a redacted only video. I mean, not a redacted, a rumble only video. Okay. So that'll be a future video. I won't be <laughs> making it today. Uh, anyway, this is, um, I did get a, get a good video. This is kind of an old video. You know, when I say old, I mean, good God, sometimes you can't go back two weeks if you're reporting on geopolitics. But this is uh, Tulsi Gabbard on free speech. Let's watch that video now. I wanted to get your take on a couple of hot issues. One, this Mark Zucker Zuckerberg letter where he comes out saying, listen, uh, admitting that the Biden-Harris administration pressured them during COVID-19 to uh, censor, and he used the word censor, COVID-19 content, said the laptop was not uh, disinformation. What do you think of that admission? It's coming. Well, first of all, it, it is what many of us have known all along, and I'm glad he had the courage to come forward uh, and speak the truth, especially right now. And this is really important, Trace, because you have Kamala Harris, who's building her whole campaign around freedom. This is her new mantra that she's she's repeating. She repeated it in her debate, uh, in her speech at the Democratic Convention, that she's going to be a president who champions freedom. But the fact is, as Mark Zuckerberg just exposed, it is Harris and Joe Biden who got him and Facebook to do their dirty work in censoring our right to free speech. Once again, her words do not match her actions. So we got to turn down the volume on whatever it is she's saying and just look at her record because that tells us the whole story about why we should not allow her in the White House as our president. All right, so that was Tulsi on free speech. And uh, we're going to get into, uh, I've got a couple of, of uh, 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 ex posts that I want to read to you. So I'll be sitting down here in just a few. Uh, and then, of course, um, we'll get into that. But here's, uh, before we get there, here's Bongino. And I was telling, I got to, also I'll read an ex post that I put up. You know, if the FBI ever comes knocking on your door, don't talk to them, man. Not without a lawyer present. Just say, I take the, you know, I'm not going to, uh, you know, I want a lawyer. Don't, because if you, I mean, General Flynn found out the hard way. Remember what happened to him? He went in, tried to be honest with them. That's where Tim Poole messed up. Tim Poole said he would talk to the FBI. God knows, I hope he's not. But, uh, but boy, they they jumped all over that. So, yeah, I mean, if FBI likes, to, I've already talked about it. If they come to your door, you might say, why are you taking that? Or something like that but a good guy don't let them don't answer any of their questions you know get Robert Barnes man <laughs> if, 
<laughs> Although he's awful hard to get. He represents the, the big fish. So, um, but let's watch Bongino right now. But I'd be remiss as a former federal agent to not warn people that given these accusations, are other people, I'm not accusing anyone specifically, I want to be clear. Are people working with the feds right now to try to ensnare other conservative influencers into this alleged, alleged operation? I'm just going to say this. Be very careful who you're emailing and be very careful who you're talking to and be very careful that you're not talking to someone working with the feds on the other end of the line. Okay, so that was Bongino. We'll get uh, the, the, the ex post here in just a minute. Oh, this always happens, and so yeah, I'm gonna be putting clips together. Pain in the butt, man. There was two, uh, two other things I wanted to talk about. Was here in Florida, we have um, um, Amendment 3 and, or Amendment 4, I don't know what you call them, uh, uh, where you vote on it. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, the first one was about marijuana, and, uh, and I thought it was about legalizing recreational marijuana. I'm all for that, man. I mean, I, you know, I think that if people want to smoke it, let them do it, man. And especially if it's legalized, then you can control and make sure there's no uh, fentanyl mixed in with the marijuana, right? You can make sure there's no cocaine or, or uh, you know, crack cocaine mixed in there. Whereas if it's illegal, you know, of course, you've got medical marijuana now. But what somebody pointed out, and I'm still on the fence, he said it still regulates or medical marijuana is still regulated. So you can't go out and smoke medical marijuana in a, um, a public facility, okay? And uh, if you go to like a Democrat state, you know, when you walk around, you just, you smell that stinky marijuana. I mean, I mean, if you, if you, if you like it, I mean, I don't mind the smell that much, but I don't want to smell it everywhere I go. It's kind of like cigarettes, you know? I don't want people smoking cigarettes. You know, remember when it was so bad when you'd be on the plane and everybody smoke, you know. So now I don't know if it, it includes planes, but what the, the 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 bad part about the bill is, it says that you can smoke recreational marijuana in public places. So now, if you're walking around Florida, just like in California, you're going to be smelling marijuana everywhere you go. I don't want that. If you want to smoke marijuana in your house, if you want to go out in the woods by yourself and smoke it, I'm I don't care, man. But don't be sitting on a street corner when I'm going to the grocery store, sitting there smoking a doobie, and I got to smell it. So I don't know, man. I might, I'll probably end up voting against that. The next one was Amendment 4. And uh, what 4 says, and the Democrats snuck this in, it says that the, the right of a woman for abortion can be determined by the doctor. And uh, so if there's anything wrong with the woman, like a pimple on her ass, that they can say, okay, let's get a, let's get a, um, an abortion. So basically that it says that they can have an abortion all the way up to the day the baby comes out the womb, just like in a Democrat state. So they're sneaking that in with some, some sneaky language, making it sound like the viability, you know, the, you know, the doctor determines the viability. All you need is a damn a Democrat doctor and he can abort uh, babies all the way up, I mean, just he, you know, he could declare any medical emergency. You know, my God, you've got a rash. <laughs> because you've got a rash, we need to abort that baby. And the woman, oh yeah, please do. And then I keep telling you the pill is available. You can take the abortion pill anytime you want. So we don't need this amendment. So I'm definitely, like Trump, voting no on Amendment 4. All right, so I did want to put that out for any Floridians that watch my videos. The other thing... I wanted to say, and I apologize, I kept telling you I don't get comments on YouTube. So go to Rumble and watch The Burn, my Burn, The Burn channel on Rumble. That's where I want you to go. But anyway, so there's a, uh, I, and I click on the comments on some videos, and it'll say like three or four or five comments. I click on there, and it says no response is found. Okay. Well, there's, I, I just realized here recently that on the left-hand side, on the count of the, the vertical menu, there's a, 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 a entry called comments. And man, I clicked on that. All of a sudden, <laughs> it was like, well, hell, here's a bunch of comments, you know? And when I say a bunch, I mean, I don't know how many's there. I got, so I'm going to go back and start answering your comments. Because uh, I found them, some of them. 
I'm sure most of them have been deleted by YouTube. But uh, I did find some comments. I've got some trolls now. That's good. Some people give me a hard time. I like being given a hard time. I don't, you know, I, I, I respond. You know, like one guy was talking about, I should go live in Russia. <laughs> I, said, I said, well, you know what? I would like to visit. I hear Moscow is very pretty and St. Petersburg is very pretty. But because of my broken neck, I can't travel and especially fly in airplanes. All right, so let's just add that to the video. Boy, I almost forgot. I didn't have my notes. Uh, anyway, there's a, a video I found on uh, RT. Imagine that. Ooh, I must be a Putin lover. <laughs> oh my God, people are so stupid. All right, so uh, anyway, um, this video is about the uh, Kursk, what's going on up there. Uh, you know, I could talk about the Ukraine war. Nobody does it better, than, like I said, than Alexander of the Durand. Just go watch his videos. He gives every freaking detail <laughs> for an hour, hour and 20 minutes sometimes, you know, talking about every town, every move, every, you know, anyway. I, but anyway, this is a good summary. Now, what I'm going to do, because there are certain places in the video where it shows uh, dead Ukrainians. And uh, because I don't want you to see that, and because YouTube probably banned this video, <laughs> I'm going to put up some tweets or some ex posts uh, that probably won't have anything to do with the video, but something that you might want to read just for your own uh, uh, benefit. I'm not sure what those ex posts are going to be because I, I haven't uh, found them yet. I, haven't, I got to go home and put together the video with some editing. But anyway, here's the video. If you want to know what's going on, it's about four minutes long. Watch it. You know, take it with a grain of salt. You might say, oh, that's Russian propaganda. That's Russia, Russia, Russia. Russia lies about everything. Yeah, yeah maybe so. Maybe so. Some updates from Russia's Kursk region. Moscow says its troops have now pushed back Kiev's military in five settlements. It comes as the battle for territory inside Russia's border enters its second month. Ukrainian troops lost over 280 soldiers and 13 armoured vehicles in the past 24 hours alone. That's according to the Russian Defence Ministry. Its forces used drones to strike Kiev's support and observation points as well as armoured vehicle routes. Well, Russia's troops have steadily been gaining ground on the battlefield of the Donetsk Republic since the start of the Kursk operation. Some of the main frontier battle zones are shown here on the map. But top military officials in Kiev are talking up their supposed successes. However, even Ukrainian officers are now challenging this stance. We increased our defense capability in the area. Indeed, over the last six days, the enemy hasn't advanced a single meter in the Pokrovsk direction. In other words, our strategy is working. Yesterday, Ukraine's Commander-in-Chief Sersky and Supreme Commander Zelensky reported that there was stabilization in the Pokrovsk direction. But if this is stabilization, I am a ballerina. The Russians continue to advance. Well, the recently secured city of Konstantinovka in the Donetsk Republic is a strategic hub for Russian forces as it opens a highway to Ukrainian fortified areas. Arti Arabic correspondent Maxim al Churi was recently there and filed this report. Raising the flag over buildings has great symbolic significance both morally and militarily. The liberation of any territory is traditionally considered complete only after this action. The Russian flag is flying over the buildings in the city of Konstantinovka after months of fierce fighting that took place here. The armed forces of Ukraine struggled for a long time to hold this territory, which is considered an important logistical hub. Soldiers from assault units reveal details of the battle. The enemy was mainly working with vehicles and artillery, and when it came to fighting with machine guns, they prefer most of the time to surrender. They rely on blocking our progress from a distance, but in vain, as soon as we reach them, they give up. We're currently at the 57th Regiment of the Russian Grouping of Troops South. These servicemen participated in the liberation of the important settlement of Konstantinovka. Through Konstantinovka, a route opens up to the highway connecting Uglida and Kurahova, which are the main fortified areas in this direction, and that is why the capture of the settlement is so important. Tanks played a decisive role in breaking through this supply line. 
battle to liberate Konstantinovka was long, but in the end we were able to liberate the city. The enemy tried to defend it, but our soldiers were able to carry out the mission. We participated in the battles through direct shelling of their fortifications. We transported military personnel and infantry and worked with the cover of the infantry combat vehicles. While assault troops attacked buildings and trenches in Konstantinovka, reconnaissance groups monitored the area using drones and destroyed enemy fortifications. These are modern weapons, modern intelligence, modern means of destruction. We are not the assault units, but we are always at the forefront of the attack, in the air. We are trying to eliminate the enemy military by ourselves or by directing artillery strikes towards them, as we are trying to shoot down Ukrainian drones. We are doing all we can to ensure the safety of our troops on the ground. Participants in the liberation of Konstantinovka, including many servicemen from the 57th Regiment, were awarded state medals for their courage and bravery exhibited in combat. Maxim Alturi, Karakhova Direction, RT. All right, let's get into the bookmarks here. We're just going to go through them real quick. Uh, this is Peter Sweden. And I checked the BBC today and I didn't see any news reports about the hundreds of thousands of people that protested for freedom in Brazil yesterday. How weird. Now I've got that video that's going to be tacked on to the end of this video. Um, it's There's no sound, but you'll see the good Lord, the number of people was insane, man. I, I couldn't believe it. Um, okay, this is David Sachs. I thought this was pretty funny. <laughs> Kennedy Democrats are now Trump Republicans, and Bush Republicans are now Harris Democrats. I thought that was cute. I would, we already talked about it. I don't think I mentioned it. Doctor, it's Dr. John Campbell, and like I said, I'll be making that um, the, the, the uh, Rumble-only video, and that, uh, that's going to be a combination of Redacted and Dr. John Campbell on uh, on Rumble. So, well, this is good to know. Uh, this, this is just uh, information. Germany, Denmark, and the Netherlands will transfer another 77 Leopard 1A5 tanks to Ukraine, German Defense Minister Pistorius said after Ram Ramstein. That was a big meeting that just took place. Uh, Berlin will also transfer another 12 uh, Panzi Panzhu Bit Z 2000 self propelled guns, six this year, six next year. Earlier, the United States announced that it would allocate $250 million in military aid. Canada will supply Ukraine with over 80,000 unarmed small missiles, rotors. Canadian Defense Minister Bill Blair announced new aid for Ukraine armed forces, which will arrive in the coming months. And then it just goes on from there. It's really not that big a package. But uh, Garland uh, Nixon just did a video that I watched just before I came out here. And he was talking about how... The, uh, all these European governments have been completely captured by the globalists. You know that doing all of this, I mean, they, they just held elections and the elections didn't mean anything. They're not changing up anything. They're, they're destroying their countries on purpose. I, uh, sorry, the dog saw a dog. <laughs> Wanted to make sure he didn't pull the basket out into the, into the road there. All right, so, um, yeah, this was funny. Uh, this is um, Medita, and I thought he, this, this is a real good post by him. Donald Trump is upset with the current administration and is threatening to uh, lift sanctions on Russia. Will he actually do it if he's elected? Of course not. Despite his seemingly anti-establishment image, Trump is ultimately a system player. Yes, he's an extravagant, self-obsessed figure, <laughs> but he's also a pragmatist. As a businessman, Trump understands that sanctions harm the global dominance of the dollar. However, not enough to start a revolution in the United States and go against the anti-Russian stance of the notorious deep state, which is far more powerful than any Trump. And what about Harris? There's certainly no reason to expect any surprises from her. She's an, she is inexperienced and, according to her critics, simply unintelligent. <laughs> that was a great comment. What? Oh, my God. She'll be given well-crafted but meaningless speeches and safe, dull answers to questions, which she will read off the teleprompter with a contagious laugh. There's, there they are going trolling her back on the laugh. <laughs> but I love that. Uh, sanctions against the USSR lasted throughout the 20th century. Now they've returned in the 21st on an unprecedented scale. 
So for all of us, it's, uh, it's sanctions forever, at least until the U.S. collapses during the inevitable new civil war. After all, Hollywood is already making movies about it for a reason. I have no doubt he's right, man. We are, well, if nothing else, I mean, right now we got Venezuela. I mean, the Democrats are all for this. I don't get it, man. We got Venezuelan gangs roaming all across the United States. Uh, we're going to get it. Well, I'll get, let's get to that tweet first before I get off on a tangent. But we got, you know, fentanyl drugs pouring across, killing hundreds of thousands. Uh, you've got Iranian terrorists in the United States. Probably uh, Russia might have some people here, China. And you know that they're going to make mischief. I mean, you know, God knows how many people are going to die. Okay, this this gets into the, the, the next big uh, post. Oh, yeah, this is this is funny. Uh, you know, I'll add this on right here. It says, breaking, the U.S. government takes a short break from interfering in the Venezuelan election to accuse Russia of interfering in the U.S. election. Breaking, Biden administration to hit Russia with sanctions for trying to manipulate U.S. opinion ahead of the election. <laughs> Oh, we already did that video for previously. All right, this is a post by General uh, Mike Flynn, and I—I uh, I don't normally like to do historical, uh, uh, you know, quotes from from people. Uh, I'll leave history up to you. Hopefully, you'll go out and learn it on your own. But this, this was a great uh, quote. It was in in response to uh, the Dan Bongino uh, warning everybody about working with the Feds, and he kind of tacked it on there. That's why I had a little trouble finding it. And I'll just read the, the whole thing here. Sadly, and currently the greatest national security threat to the citizens of the United States of America is the clear lack of trust between us and the federal government. You think? <laughs> I wouldn't trust the, the CDC. I wouldn't trust anything the CDC says or the FDA or the CIA or the or the or uh, any of the three-letter agencies. I mean, who, good God. That's why I say don't say anything to the FBI. But anyway, I wanted to remind you all who wish to read this post in 1838, a 20-year-old, remember, can you believe Abraham, I mean, back then, people were young, and they were so damn intelligent. Don't tell me that we're not being poisoned and our brain cells are all dying <laughs> in the modern age. But anyway, it's uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln stated, and I wanted to read this to you because it's talking about the fact that there's no reason for us to be involved in this war in Ukraine. There's no reason for us to have 800 bases all around the world. This is all a globalist agenda. It doesn't help the United States at all. If we took the money that we spent on Ukraine and applied it to the American people, the Democrats, the warmongering totalitarian Democrats, that's what they want. They want war all over the world. We could help out the nation in, in ways you couldn't fathom. I mean, there wouldn't be any homeless in the United States if we would spend the money that we spent on Ukraine. But anyway, I wanted to read this to you because it goes right to the meaning of all of that. By what means shall we fortify against this threat? Shall we expect some transatlantic military giant to, ste to step the ocean and crush us with a blow? Well, it's kind of true now because Russia does have <laughs> submarines parked off the coast of the United States. Now, they could hit us with nukes or they could hit us with some hypersonic missiles. You know, so don't think that the United States had... Uh, Colonel McGregor keeps pointing out that, you know, we have been this unsinkable island in the world uh, where, you know, we could do whatever we wanted overseas and never have to face repercussions. That's not true anymore. We've got people in the United States that are going to mess us up, man. They are going to mess us up. So, never. All the armies of Europe, Asia, and Africa combined, with all the treasure of Earth, our own accepted, in their military chest, with a Bonaparte for a commander, could not by force take drink from the Ohio or make a track on the Blue Ridge. In a trial of a thousand years, at what point then is the approach of danger to be expected, if it ever reaches us? It must spring up amongst us. You see what I'm saying about having all the terrorists in the United States? Even, I mean, can you imagine back in the 1800s that he predicted this? It must spring, spring up amongst us, because the Democrats have brought them all in. They want chaos. Uh, it cannot come from abroad. If destruction be our lot, we must ourselves be its author and finisher. The Democrats are the author, and they will be the finisher. As a nation of free men, we must live through all time or die by suicide. Yes, there are always external forces, but these states, united together with the leadership that I know America can still muster, can withstand these times. However, we must take our responsibilities as citizens and participate in the discourse of our nation now. The summer is over. 
it is time to get to work. Of course, this, I think this is towards the end of the, the Civil War. We'll see, what did he say, 1860, what was the date on this? Oh, that's 1838. Okay, well, never mind. This is way back. The summer is over. It's time to get to work. Push back on those who wish to our demise and stand up with and for the rights we still maintain and speak out as Lincoln and other great leaders throughout history have done. Of course, that's the quote from, from General Flynn. Great, great freaking ex post. Okay, we're finishing off the video here. Uh, we've got a view of a tanker burning uh, in the Red Sea. I'm not sure how how old this video is and maybe I put it on a previous video it's just I think it's a different perspective uh, seeing the tanker burning from the uh, the hoodies hitting it and then we've got this this is the greatest thing ever you don't think Russian pilots are good at what they do you don't think Russian pilots are, are, are could be they could shoot down American F-35s watch this uh, Sukhoi aerobatic aero, uh, uh, aerobactics uh, display. Unbelievable. There's a little guy. They're not the cutest dog ever. I don't know what what I'll do when his wife gets or his, his, the old battle axe gets back from London. She's gonna take him away from me. Just wanted to get that on the video. Look at him. He's having a good time. Funny how he'll only walk going back. I don't get it at all. We got something going here. I've been trying to get a lizard on the videos, which are so damn fast. We're gonna sneak up on this little guy. See if I can get him on the video. Oh, there he goes. See what I mean? <laughs> damn, we were getting really close to him. So these are all over the place, but this is the biggest one that I've seen. Look at the size of that guy. Hopefully I'm getting him on the video, there we go. Look at that, let's get really close. Wow, insane, huh? Insane. Nature clip. God, I love Florida. What's not to love?